Hi, you're listening to the sermon recording podcast of Awaken Church. Awaken is a church of missional communities whose vision is to see individuals experience healing through the gospel, be raised to their fullest potential among community, and sent out to live a life on mission. You can find out more online at awakenvb.com. And if you live in Hampton Roads, we invite you to check out our worship gathering in the Haygood area of Virginia Beach, Saturday evenings at 5 p.m. Thank you for listening. All right. What's up, Awaken Church? How you guys doing? All right. You know, uh, one of the benefits of us having a Saturday night worship gathering is that you guys should be awake by now. So kind of awkward. I didn't feel like that was a great hello, but it's okay. Uh, I love you guys enough to tell you the truth. You guys sounded pretty terrible. So we can try it again if you want. So, hey, how you guys doing tonight? All right. Thank you. I love you guys. See? A little healthy accountability never hurt anybody, right? We want to be raised to our fullness in, account, in, in community, so I love that. Hey, we are in the back half of a series right now called Free, and we have been walking through this series um, really with the heart for us as a church to kind of share with you one of the convictions of our co-leadership team, of our spiritual leadership team, and really goes into the DNA and the heart of who we are as a church, that we absolutely exists as a church for people in this community in Hampton Roads and around the world for that matter to experience the freedom that can only come through Jesus Christ. If you're here for a reason other than that primarily, then I want to help invite you to a new perspective. Because if you're here simply for awesome kids ministry, if you're here for phenomenal worship, if you're here for great teaching, and you are here to consume some part of our church expression and leave from a consumer level, then I want to invite you to another level in this series, really, because I believe that not only does God want something for you, he wants you to walk in freedom. God wants to take you as an individual If you are a Christ follower, then you are a son or a daughter of the king. And with that comes the responsibility of really being a freedom ambassador. You're a carrier now of freedom into anywhere that God has sent you. And we talked about this a few weeks ago, kind of helping to redefine what freedom means. We talked about this idea that freedom is not the unrestricted level of, uh, it's not, not living without restrictions, right? It's not living this unhindered life. It's not living as if you can just do whatever you want to do, right? I told the, the joking story of like me punching Dave Hensley in the mouth, grabbing his wallet, disappointed because there's no money in it, grabbing his car keys, disappointed he drove the Tacoma, right? And then like going to, you know, McDonald's and eating all the food I wanted to eat, only to like an hour later have an angry Dave Hensley chasing me down and to feel really gross from eating McDonald's for an hour, right? Like that is living unrestricted and it is not God's best for me. And so we talked about this idea that freedom is not living without restrictions. We love our independence as Americans and as human citizens in general, but at the end of the day, independence is not the same thing as freedom. We want something for you as a church Because we believe that God wants to walk into your life and begin to break things apart that have been keeping you in bondage. We talked about this analogy of imagine if if there was a prison cell, right, that all of a sudden you were in. That prison cell is, is the bondage of our lives. And at the end of the day, we use the metaphor of this prison cell that God will, will rip the, the jail cell door off, but it's up to you and I if we decide we want to walk in God's freedom. That God has absolutely created paths of freedom for you and I to walk in. Not only through the power of, of the cross, but also through the power of community, through the power of confession, through the power of the pathways that we preach on regularly here at the church. We want freedom to happen in your life, both practically in your head, heart, and hands. But at the end of the day, the onus and responsibility is 100% on you to get up out of the prison cell and walk into that freedom. Now, let me ask you a question, because I think we're uh, we're in a pretty polarized society, so it's all the time here is is just a a cultural awareness of 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 what's happening in our society right? But if you're going to put people into two camps, right, a lot of times you'll have debates. So like in college, a big one, because it was not, there was not a Chipotle for the first two years of college, so it was only Moe's. 
and then all of a sudden Chipotle rolled into town, and then it was the big debate, right? Chipotle or Moe's. So how many of you guys Chipotle fans? Yeah? Moe's fans over at Chipotle? Wow, more divided than I thought. Interesting. I, the Chipotle fans are always aggressively louder than the Moe's people. You guys notice that? Because they're like, yeah. The, are they what? They're compensating. Yes, got it. Well, one place gives you free chips and salsa. I'm just saying. Uh, one place has great steaks, so really it depends on like where I want to go. But how, what would you say? What are some other things in your life, maybe in your family, right? Like uh, maybe Popeyes or Chick-fil-A. Maybe, I don't know if that's a debate or do what? Not even a debate. Not even a debate. All right. Jeff Riggs will disagree with you sometimes, but <laughs> sorry, Jeff, to throw you under the bus, man. It, what else? Like you have, you have Tech and UVA. What are some other highly, What? Coke or Pepsi, that's a great one. What else? It, that's, that's a, that's a, not, it's not relevant to this at all. Yes or no? All right, fine. Yes, is that, okay. Uh, what kind of Christmas movies, I guess? I understand like this or this, but I guess yes or no. That's okay. All right, fair. Do you like this, yes or no? <laughs> Looking for more of an either or, but yes or no works. Um, yeah, what else? Give me something else. Okay, great. Yep, toilet paper over or under, right? That's a good one. Anyone that's an under? You don't really care. All right, it's only, it's only over in our home, just so you know. Anyone else that's an only over? All right, I'm going to the bathroom in all of your homes. Perfect. All right, great. Love it. I'll be there later. We, we have these internal debates, right, between uh, whether it's in your, in your marriage, in your homes, with your kids, uh, you know, you have like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. You have other things that are common, like pick this or this. And yeah, you can like both things. Uh, but there's obviously, there's people who begin to have strong opinions on one camp or the other. And, and to be honest with you, pertaining to freedom, I think there are two camps a lot of people fall into. I, uh, we use a lot of different, both personality things like Enneagram and Myers-Briggs and uh, and other things like DISC to help understand who we are as individuals. We also, as a church, use this idea of APES, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and shepherds, to help us understand how God's wired us as people. But if I had to use another example, I use this pretty often, most people can kind of fall into two camps uh, in my life. You're either a chef or a baker, right? The chefs are people who say, hey, what do I have to work with? Let's figure it out, right? So you open the pantry and you're like, all right, I have some canned corn, I have some salmon, I have some of this, I have some of this. And you start to figure out what am I going to use to make this dish, right? And chefs love that. They love the experience of creating something without a recipe or plan. And they may use a recipe as a a kind of a lean on an idea of it, right? But they're not there to use a recipe, right? A baker, on the other hand, they love following recipes to a T, They love baking because it's about the exact science. If you get the slightest amount of sugar or salt wrong in baking a dish, the whole thing will taste drastically different, right? The chemistry, if you will, of the ingredients tastes totally different if a baker doesn't follow a recipe to an exact science. And so I fall into the chef category personally. Not only is it something that I love to do personally, I love to cook, and I love the experimentation of cooking, but my natural personality is I walk into a room, give me a blank, blank canvas, and let me just figure it out, right? I'm going to figure it out with whoever's there or by myself, and we're just going to start to draw and create things. I love to build, create, and design new things from nothing. There are some of you in the room, if I give you a blank canvas, you're like, so what am I supposed to draw? Can you, are we doing like an animal? Are we doing like nature scene? Like, what's going on? And I've already like halfway finished my picture, right? Because you're like, you didn't give me any instruction because you're a baker, right? Both are needed within the kingdom of God. Both are celebrated and both drive each other crazy. Now, when it comes to this idea of freedom, though, I think there are two people that I see in the church all the time. And unfortunately, we may fall into one camp or the other, but I'll be the first one to be honest and raise my hand. I regularly fall into both of these camps at times, not just one or the other. The first one is there are people who want freedom, and the second one, there are people who walk in freedom. Everyone wants freedom. Like, there's not a single person you're like, hey, do you want freedom in your life? Do you want to experience the freedom to do, whether it's freedom in life in general, freedom that comes from walking in Christ, in the relationship with him? We all want freedom. But there's a big difference between wanting freedom 
and people I know who walk in freedom. And again, I'll be the first one to say there are times in my life where I want freedom, but I'm not willing to walk in freedom. Because choosing to walk on the path of freedom, it costs me something. It requires me to own my part of where I'm at, and it requires me to make changes in my life. And so we can all sit here, right? You can use any analogy you want, right? The gym's an easy one, right? You can want to be healthy, but it requires you to be disciplined to go to the gym regularly. It requires you to eat healthier. It requires you to track your steps, to track calories. It requires you to do certain things that would help you live a healthier lifestyle. Now, I love a good fried dish. I love a uh, a good mixed drink. I love a lot of things that they are not good for counting calories or for going to the gym. And so if I eat those things all the time, it's one thing to say I want to live healthy. It's another thing to say I'm choosing to walk in healthy lifestyles. Do you see the difference? Pretty, pretty simple, right? We would all agree there's a big difference between wanting something and walking in something. And as a church, we talked about this a few weeks ago that really when it comes to the freedom that we want to experience in our lives, that we at Awaken want for you, it's one thing for us to want you to be free. It's another thing for you to choose to walk in that freedom. We can create all the great avenues, ministry tools, discipleship uh, articles. We can create missional communities, discipleship cores. We can do great outreach opportunities. We can design the best worship gathering experiences out there. But at the end of the day, all we can do is say we want you to experience the freedom that comes from knowing Jesus. At the end of the day, you have to choose to walk in that freedom. And choosing to walk in that freedom means that you're not just only set free, it means you learn to stay free. Let me say that again. Learning how to be free is not just being set free from something in your life, it's learning how to stay free. And so tonight, I'm going to give you some pretty simple, fundamental, basic principles. We're going to read a couple of scripture passages, but what I want more than anything for you to leave here tonight is feeling optimistic, hopeful, and excited that you can choose to not only be set free, but choose to walk in freedom, to stay free. Because it's one thing for us to build this great big elaborate billboard as a church and say, hey, you can be free. It's another thing for us to say, hey, take exit 12. That's the best way to get free. Right? So we want to help you figure out what it means for you as a person to walk in God's best for you, which we believe is freedom. When I was a kid growing up, I remember we used to always keep, my mom was, is still to this day, she is phenomenal about keeping her pantry just, just stock full of great food. Like my mom is just my mom. There's no animals. There's no kids in the home. But if I walked in right now, there's like four or five bags of chips in there, a couple of crackers, some, some cookies in there, like it's just her, and she's like a rail who doesn't eat barely anything, but yet it's just always full. She has to throw away food all the time, right? She's going to listen to this sermon later on and tell me that I'm wrong, but she has to throw away food all the time. As a kid, I remember we were allowed to have a snack when we got home from school. And you guys remember back in the day, right? You come from school, hey, mom or dad, can I get a snack, right? And one of my favorite snacks to get when I home from school was a Fig Newton. You guys ever have Fig Newtons before, right? Kind of maybe an odd snack, but it's one of my favorite things. I just, I love a Fig Newton. You cannot just eat one Fig Newton, though. Like, if you ever had one, and maybe for you it's not Fig Newtons, maybe for you it's an Oreo, or we could pick our vices, okay, that's fair, but you, you fill in the blank with whatever your Fig Newton is, right? But for me, I could never have just one. Mom's rule was that we could only have two Fig Newtons, or two of whatever it was, and it was, impo- I never ate just two, right? I broke the rule all the time. Because my natural personality, and also I would say most of us just in general as human beings, when you experience something that you love, man, I don't just want a little bit of it. I want all of it, right? Give me the whole sleeve of Fig Newtons, right? Give me the whole container of Oreos, the whole bag of chips, right? If I brought chips over to your home and you're like, hey, do you want some chips? Next thing you know, like, hey, where the chips go? I just bought them yesterday. Yeah, they're gone. I ate the whole bag already, right? We watched a great movie. We watched The Matrix, right? It was awesome. Ate the bag of chips, right? And it was perfect, right? What is it for you? Is it ice cream? Anybody else? I'm just going to make all of you guys super hungry right now. Ice cream lovers, like you can't just eat like one scoop of ice cream. You need to have more salty food. Salty food people, chip. What is it? Thin mints. Girl Scout cookies are out right now. I have not been offered to purchase any yet. I would love to buy some from anyone, by the way. I'm, I'm like a big fan of the like, um, what's the, oh, geez, was it? 
Samoas, yes, Samoas. Oh, Jesus, praise him. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, give me some of those. Absolutely. You can't just eat one of those, right? Absolutely. I, and, and, and all joking aside, I, I don't just want a little bit of freedom in my life. I want all of it, right? I truly am being serious. I don't just want to experience a little bit of freedom. It's one thing for God to come into my life, open up a drawer, to use this metaphor, and clean out the drawer that I had some mess in. It's another thing for me to say, hey, God, will you walk through my home? And we begin to put things back where we're supposed to go. Open that closet door I haven't opened in a while. See what's in that one. Here's the key to that, which I don't ever open. Here's this room that I don't ever open. Here's the basement that I've, I haven't been in it for years because I'm scared to go down there. I don't just want God to give me the freedom into a few areas of my life. I genuinely want God to bring freedom into all parts of who I am. And that comes from understanding, as we talked about in week one, that wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the path to freedom is first and foremost understanding that we need to be in tune, lock and key with God's presence. So here's how we defined what freedom was. It wasn't about this uh, living life without restrictions. We define freedom this way, that freedom is the unhindered experience of the presence of God. Freedom is the unhindered experience of the presence of God. When you walk in the freedom that is the presence of God, you become completely removed from all the things in your life that hold you back. You walk in this immense freedom because the Spirit of the Lord is there. You know what I'm talking about. When you've allowed God's presence to enter into a part of your life and you've experienced freedom in that part, it is completely this unhindered experience that you know that only God can bring. Let me read this, this psalm tonight, which will kind of kick us off in this conversation around what it means to walk the path of freedom. Psalm 1611 says this, You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. I love this psalm because it talks about this idea when we walk in this pathway towards freedom that God wants for us, we experience this abundant joy, this presence from God that begins to give us things, not in the sense of just doting over us with gifts, but giving us his presence. We talked about this in week one, that God's very design from the beginning in the Garden of Eden and, is, and, and all the way fast forward into Revelation. So from book end to book end of our scriptures, God's desire has always been to be a presence, to be in community, in relationship with his people. And that when we experience that presence that comes with being in community with God, we then begin to understand God's desire for freedom in our life. Whether for you that's an addiction, whether for you it's uh, something you struggle with regularly, food, pornography, alcohol, people's approval, success, money, whatever it is for you that begins to, to hold you back, what I want for you, but most importantly, what your Father in heaven wants for you is for you to walk in freedom, to break out of that, to be set free, and then to stay free. And that happens when we choose to walk in the way of life. So this psalmist is saying, you will show me the way of life. John 10.10, 10, we read it a few weeks ago, says that God has, Jesus has come to give us life and life to the fullest. Other translations say life abundantly. God desires to give you life abundantly. This isn't some, uh, some gospel message around giving you lots of stuff. It's about God's heavenly Father, his heart for you as a person to give generous gifts to his children. And when we begin to understand that that is who our Father is, we begin to understand his heart for freedom for us. Now, at Awaken, we talk about this regularly through three rhythms— Healing in, raising up, and sending out. These three rhythms absolutely speak volumes into this language of freedom pertaining to the series. So let me give you three practical things pertaining to our rhythms that speak to this language of freedom that we want for you as a church. 
The first one is healing in. That if you really want to see God break free areas of your life, you have to be willing to say, God, will you begin to bring wholeness and healing into areas of my life? Now, this happens first and foremost on an individual level, but God desires to bring freedom into your life, and that freedom happens when you choose to say, God, I'm inviting that healing. I I know that I'm broken, messed up. Nicole joked about it being crooked, right? Whatever it is, we all have things in our lives that we want God to bring healing in. And when we experience that healing, we begin to understand freedom. Raising up our next rhythm. That as we begin to walk in this idea of being healed inward, that God desires to raise us to our fullest potential. And we talked about this already with Nicole's missional highlight. I love that because when we want to experience freedom in community, it's now beginning to say, hey, look, not only is God bringing healing in my life, freedom in my life, but I get to talk about that freedom in a way that allows my community to walk with me to be raised to my fullest potential. And when we begin to, be, begin to be raised to our fullest potential, our internal community, the body of believers that we walk through life with, we begin to share experiences together. And Scripture is very clear that when two or more are gathered, that I am in your midst. There's a power of presence, not only in community, but the presence of the Lord exists when we choose to be raised to our fullness by walking in community. So you can't do this on your own. I genuinely believe that you will never experience the fullness of freedom if you're choosing to do this only on your own. God's desire has never been for you to do anything solely on your own. That God desires for you to be in community to experience the fullness of his path for you. And that's part of why we have raising up as one of our rhythms. And then finally, this is the best part. As you begin to experience healing, as you begin to, to be raised to your fullness, and you begin to understand this freedom that God has for you, you're now an ambassador of carrying that freedom to the world. Don't be a selfish Christian who just simply lives in community, lives out practical discipleship in the church, but misses the mission that God has sent you on to share that freedom with the world. Because as we talked about with the matrix analogy in week one, everyone's plugged up to the machine. We are all pursuing freedom from something, in in pursuit of something that will give us freedom, that will give us this desire of feeling free for the moment. And what ends up happening is that anything that we pursue to feel that freedom actually ends up enslaving us, not giving us freedom. The only thing that doesn't give us this enslavement is when we choose to follow Jesus and we begin to understand it's not about what you do, it's about who you become. And when we choose to walk in that identity understanding, it's in those moments that God begins to say, that's great, Philip, you're starting to finally get it, you idiot, right? All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, God, thanks. I, it took me a while. Thank you, right? And I'll slow up again next week, and, right? But it's not about what I do. It's about who I'm becoming. And in that journey, that path to freedom, God says, hey, tell people. It's pretty simple. You don't need to have this elaborate salvation message presented to your coworker or to your neighbor. Maybe just talk about freedom that you're experiencing in your life and let God do the rest. The Spirit is at work in those conversations. I want to finish up tonight the last couple minutes that we have together talking around two words, path and pattern. Interesting enough, the word path and pattern both have very similar root words in the English language. I think that's relevant to the conversation tonight around this path to freedom because really at the end of the day, if we want to walk on the path to freedom, we have to start healthy patterns. If we want to walk on the path to freedom, we have to start healthy patterns. The two are absolutely married and connected. Think about right now how much data is collected on you every day. Right? It's freakishly scary. It makes you want to like, wear aluminum, like, you know, helmet on your head, run to the mountains and like disconnect from the world, right? I literally can tell you stories and maybe you have similar ones of like telling someone, not even on my phone, just telling someone, right? Man, I love dark chocolate. I love the like those dark chocolate, blueberry, 
or like the uh, Akai acai berry, like dark chocolate, like those Brookshire ones. You know what I'm about? Oh, God, those are heavenly, right? Again, you can't eat just one. I don't want just a little. I want the whole thing, right? But that's my problem. Maybe not yours, right? And then like a day later on Facebook, like there's an ad for these dark chocolates that I was just talking about. I'm like, big data is out there always listening, right? Always watching, and it will freak you out. But my point in saying that is sometimes these external uh, companies, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, they know more about the patterns of your life to predict the path that you're on than even you do. They know more about the patterns of your lifestyle to know the path that you're already walking on. And so part of it understanding, and I want to throw this picture up here just as a, a quick analogy. Science talks about this even in the brain. If you look, let's talk about addicts or other things that we can see, you, what's fascinating about the, the brain, the, how God designed it, is that you could absolutely, over time, begin to create habits that will begin to create these neuro pathways in your brain. Did you know this? There's, if the more that you do something, there's a habit formed. Not only is that habit something that you see ritually in your life, but it's also something that's literally in your brain. There's a neuro pathway in your brain about the path that you're choosing to regularly engage in. And I, I got this uh, from some way smarter than me. Habits are formed by, by three things. It's formed by a cue, a routine, and a reward. A cue. So I get home from a long day, I want to have a beer. Pop open that can, right? Psst. I've had a long day. I deserve it, right? My endorphins are high-fiving me. They're enjoying it, right? Dopamines, they're killing it. They're like, yeah, this is awesome. The routine. I do this regularly when I have a long day. The reward, I deserve a beer. Not two beers tonight. Not three beers. Let's see where it goes. I love a good beer. But when there's a habit in my life that revolves around a cue, that becomes a routine, that becomes my reward, it better be something that God is absolutely in the midst of. There better be the presence of God in that habit, or else I promise you that habit is going to take me down a path that will absolutely end up enslaving me, not bringing freedom into my life. And so really, what's the practical takeaway for tonight? I want to give you, talking about the path that you walk on for freedom. The difference, honestly, is in the discipline. The difference is in the discipline. If you are willing to walk a disciplined life as a Christ follower, you will move as that person who not only wants freedom, but who walks in freedom. Who not only has been set free, but stays free. You can want it all you want. You can want to walk out of the cell, but until you walk out of the cell and experience God's freedom, you will continue to be captivated and walk from moments of freedom to moments of freedom. And I, I don't want that. Maybe, and maybe I'm hoping that you don't either. I don't want to walk from moment of freedom to moment of freedom to moment of freedom. Look back and say, man, I've, I've, had, some, I've had a great run of freedom. I want to live on a path that is always free. I want to walk in a freedom path. And I truly believe that God desires for that. Let's read this final passage from Romans chapter 12 tonight. So dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way of, to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. Then listen to this. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God absolutely desires for all of us to be renewed from our heads to our hearts to our hands. The ways that we think, the ways that we feel, the things that we do. Freedom is not just simply this intellectual thing I believe in. I believe in freedom. I believe that God wants freedom. It's when I allow him to walk into my heart and begin to work through those closets I talked about. And then I choose to walk in that freedom regularly. 
In light of Romans chapter 12, let me leave you this final thought tonight. Conforming is easy, but transforming is hard. The path of least resistance is conforming. You can choose to conform to the ways of this world, to the patterns of the way things are already set in place. But what I'm inviting you to hopefully tonight in a beautiful, exciting way is that you don't have to conform to the ways of this world. You don't have to be just simply set free for a moment. You can choose to walk in the path of freedom. It will require discipline, but transformation will continue to occur because transformation happens on an identity level. It happens in the core of who we are as people. It's worth every step to climb the mountain of transformation, but it is not easy. Conforming to the ways of this world just requires us to hop on the next train on the way down the mountain. And you end up right back to where you were. But if you choose to walk a transformed life, it doesn't mean that you get it perfect. It doesn't mean you get it right all the time. But the path of freedom that God wants for you, the power of his presence in your life, means that you are regularly going back to your Heavenly Father, submitting to the Spirit, and walking in freedom. The world is dying to see some real freedom, I promise you. In your schools, in your neighborhoods, in your families, in your places of work, there are people right now who would love nothing more than to be set free from the bondage that they feel in their lives. May you be a carrier of that freedom. May you be an ambassador of the freedom. May you begin to show them what transformation looks like. Show them what healing in looks like. Show them who brings healing into their life. Show them what being raised to our fullness looks like. And show them what it means to walk on mission together as carriers of that freedom. If you want to see the patterns in your life, the habits that are in your life, then I want you in this moment of worship that we have, this moment of reflection, just look at the path that you're on right now. Just have an honest conversation with yourself. Where am I at? Am I conforming or am I transforming right now? Am I simply just trying to break free in this moment or am I trying to stay free as a Christ follower? Your heavenly father, the king of the universe, looks at you as a son or daughter and says, I sent Jesus for you to stay free. And I sent my spirit to help you walk in freedom. Because my desire as your father is that you would be free. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I have come that you would have life and life to the fullest. That you would experience the joy of walking on the path that God has set for you. I enjoy hearing Nicole share about a sermon that I preached back a few months ago, but in no overly spiritual way, I mean this 100%. I hope that you choose to spit out whatever tonight you didn't need to hear from me and that if simply I just quote scripture back at you, that that, that God's word will preach at you tonight. Because it's not about what I say, it's about the Lord has clearly said to you, my presence is what brings freedom in your life. That I want the fullness for you as my child. That my goal is to not have you just conformed, but to be transformed. I'm not simply interested in the things that you do. That Look at Romans 12 at the end of it, right? He says that you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. If you've ever asked the question, God, what's your will for my life? His will for you is that you would walk in freedom. And at Awakened Church, we've given you three simple rhythms to live in. Allow freedom to happen through healing, through being raised up in community, and allow freedom to be the thing that carries you back out into the world as a missionary, mobilized as freedom carriers. Where are you at tonight, right? Let me ask you that question. Where are you 
Are you simply looking just to break free in this moment? Or are you walking on a path of freedom? Do you want to stay free? Or do you want to keep getting put back into the prison cell and having to walk out constantly? It's exhausting, right? It's absolutely exhausting. Because again, I told you up front, there are two people, right? People who want to be free and people who walk in freedom. And I am the first one to raise my hand and say, I regularly want freedom. I'm not always willing to pay the price to walk in freedom because it requires discipline. It requires me to give up who I am and reset my identity back as a son of the king. But every time I do without fail, I begin to see transformation in my life. And that's what I want for you. As a fellow messed up, crooked, jacked up person, that's what our leadership team wants for you. So we're going to sing about in these last few moments. Let me pray for us. Jesus, I love and I receive the message that you want for us to be free. That you desire for all of us, the sons and daughters in this room, those who have yet to walk in the fullness that you have for them, the skeptors, the deconstructors, the doubters, the hurting, the wounded, the addict, the isolated, the anxious, the worried, the depressed, the fearful. those living in debt. God, you desire to bring freedom into all areas of our lives. You desire that we would walk in the freedom that you have for us as your children. God, tonight I'm excited that you want that for us, but God, we have read your scriptures loud and clear tonight to know that the, you require motion from us, this openness and willingness of our hearts, our minds, our hands and feet to get up and, and walk out of the prison cell, to get up and to not only be set free, but to stay free. God, would you cause each person here to figure out what is it for them where are they at and where would you call each one of us to walk on that path to freedom? God, would you break the habits in our lives that are not healthy? Would you begin to cause us to reset from conforming to the patterns of this world to being transformed? God, would you send your spirit into this room into our lives, into our neighborhoods, into our schools, into our places of work? And would you begin to bring freedom with us as ambassadors and carriers, mobilized, sent out with that freedom? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In your name, would you bring freedom into these places? Amen.